Tonight, updates on the Alabama hostage situation. Plus, students donate canned goods to watch the Super Bowl. Stay tuned, Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for January 31st, 2013. I'm Amanda Ford. And I'm Deatra Montgomery. Thanks for joining us this evening. Authorities say a five-year-old boy is taken hostage on Tuesday in Alabama appears to be unharmed and his captor is allowing medicine to be given to, to the child. The ordeal began on Tuesday when a man boarded a school bus, shot and killed the driver, and then took off with the child. Ines Ferre has the latest on the standoff. Dozens of law enforcement officers are camped outside a dirt road in Alabama as a hostage situation enters its third day. The standoff began Tuesday when a gunman boarded a school bus near Midland City and demanded the driver give him any two children. When the driver refused, the suspect shot and killed him and dragged away a five-year-old boy. Police say the shooter brought the boy to a bunker on his property. Negotiators were able to get medicine to the child who has health issues. Shaken community members gathered at a prayer service last night. I'm here to support Ethan and his family to pray that he gets out safe. Fasting and prayer. Pastor Roger Stone spoke to the boy's parents hours after he was taken. Our church provided some support to them and had a chance to just visit with them a little bit and have prayer with them. Neighbors say the suspect is a retired truck driver who threatened to shoot kids who trespass on his property. Very antisocial, very anti-government, um, hates everybody. Rhonda Wilbur says the man also beat her dog for wandering onto his side of the road. My granddaughter who just turned seven, when I have her visiting me this next weekend, I won't have to worry about mean man. One way or another, he's not going to be there. He will either be locked up or he'll be dead. The suspect was due in court on Wednesday on a weapons charge. Negotiators have been talking with him for hours, but have not said if he has made any demands. Ines Ferre for CBS News, New York. Authorities have not given out the alleged shooter name. The bus driver is identified as 66-year-old Charles Poland, Jr. Coming from high school to college can be a big jump for many people, but that jump doesn't have to be hard. Some college students are willing to help upcoming freshmen with that transition, but right now the helpers are seeking help. Bree Sanders gives us a look. Inspiring, motivating people across campus together. On Monday afternoon, a group of students attended an informational meeting on how to become an impact leader. Well, we just had an interest meeting to let students know what to prepare for for the uh, for their interviews with the two rounds of interviews. Um, you know, we want students to, to feel confident and um, not be surprised about anything during the interview. So we felt like if they attend the intro session, um, they can get the information um, and just be prepared. One of the aspects in college that people stress is the experience. For most students, their first visit at Troy University is during impact. One student tells us her most memorable moment during her impact session. My impact leaders were really wonderful. It was Daryl and Janie Steindorf. And um, they were just really open, like they had open arms to me. And um, they were just very engaging to all of the, the people in their group. So I had a really good impact experience. A former impact leader gives his advice to future impact leaders on what to keep in mind when applying for the position. You honestly do have to love Troy. You have to want to be here. Um, you have to really have a deep desire um, for Troy University. And um, also, just be yourself. Uh, I know that's stereotypical. That's a cliche answer. Um, but really, impact's not looking for a um, nice, perfect, um, stereotypical, great, you know, student. I mean, we just want you to be yourself. Bree Sanders, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The next intercession will be held Thursday, February 7th at 5.30 in the admissions office. Well, this, foot, this weekend, football fans all over the country will undoubtedly enjoy the big game with a variety of snacks and treats. But there are some people who won't be that lucky, and a group of Troy students are trying to do their part to help out. Troy Civic Scholar Program is holding a Super Bowl party Sunday with the emphasis on soup. The group is collecting canned goods to help feed the needy. The group felt this event would be a fun way for students to help out the community. 
We are going to be hosting the first event for the Civic Scholar Program, which is going to be called Super Bowl of Caring, spell it as a soup can, S-O-U-P-E-R. Um, and basically, it's going to be a big Super Bowl party, and students are all invited and welcome to come. And you just bring a soup can or a donation, and that's going to be given to the Salvation Army. Bowl of Caring will be Sunday night starting at 530 in the dining hall. Well, Amanda, Troy University hosts many pageants for female students on campus. That's right, Deatra, but one pageant focuses more on one characteristic rather than various talents. Sydney Todd has the story. When people hear the word pageant, most tend to think of beautiful girls in gorgeous gowns. But for those who are haunted by the thought of the dreaded interview and onstage question, the Miss Venus pageant could serve as a suitable alternative at winning a crown. It's just simply a beauty walk like you had maybe in high school. Um, it's the pageant that we choose our representative for the alumni weekend, the spring reunion weekend they ride in our spring parade. This is an opportunity for young women to show off their beauty, grace, and poise without being overwhelmed by the pressures some pageants can have. One of the more well-known pageants on campus is the Miss Troy University pageant. But unlike what these girls had to go through, participants in Miss Venus may find it's a lot less work. The difference with Miss Venus is that it's just a fun pageant. It doesn't matter if you've been married, if you're divorced, if you have children. As long as you're a female and you go to Troy University, you're eligible to be in this pageant. It's simply a walk through. You put on your dress, you um, fix your makeup, and it's a good time to get out in those evening gowns and, and show off our really pretty girls. But as in all pageants, the newly crowned winner must bear certain responsibilities. She goes to the scholarship luncheon and the scholarship brunch on Senior Preview Day, uh, the Trojan Day that we have in the spring. She rides in the parade and is a parade grand marshal. She um, attends the nightly activities that are um, conducted for the alumni chapter and represents the school. She also rides in the homecoming parade um, in the fall, and she also represents the city of Troy. Sometimes Caitlin Sexton, who's our present Miss Venus, has gone to um, business openings. The annual Miss Venus pageant is scheduled for March 21st in the Trojan Center Ballrooms. Sydney Todd, Troy Trojan Vision News. The Miss Venus pageant will be held on March 21st at 7 p.m. in Claudia Crosby Theater. And now taking a look at news from around the state. In Balington, a trial has been scheduled for a man accused of fatally stabbing his wife in her neck last year. The Coleman Times reports 48-year-old Michael Wayne Lindsay was indicted in the death of 31-year-old Tammy Lynn Lindsay shortly after being released from Walker County Mental Health Facility in 2012. In Mobile, Mobile County Sheriff's officials say a teen who escaped from a courtroom has been recaptured. Reports say 18-year-old Devin Lane Stevens escaped a Mobile courtroom, ran from several officers Wednesday morning after his bail had been revoked. Stevens was arrested on charges of manufacturing and trafficking methamphetamine and burglary. And in Montgomery, a bill has been pre-filed in the Alabama House that would legalize the use of marijuana for medical purposes. The sponsor, Democratic Representative Patricia Todd of Birmingham, says legalizing the drug for medical purposes would help cancer, cancer patients receiving chemotherapy and others suffering from severe pain. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, the women's basketball team was in action last night and the men hit the court in just a few hours. Daniel Percival will be in with all the details on both games coming up. But first, confirmation hearings begin this morning for a former Republican senator. We'll have that story more after the break. Defense Secretary nominee Chuck Hagel goes head to head with his former colleagues in his Senate confirmation hearing. I'm Danielle Nottingham on Capitol Hill. I'll have the story coming up. Today. Today we gather as a nation and as an international community to recognize the selfless decision of one of the most influential women of our time. She's been recognized by religious figures and politicians around the world. To us, she's just Rachel. But to the rest of the world, she's the woman who, after having one too many drinks, chose not to drive home buzzed. 
here today to honor Rachel is the family whose lives she spared. From the High Definition Digital Production Studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. For a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world, we'll go to Amanda Ford at the Global News Desk. Amanda. Thanks, Deatra. Chuck Hagel faced hours of sharp questions from former colleagues at his Senate confirmation hearing. President Obama's choice to lead the Department of Defense worked to explain past policy positions on Israel, Iran, and Iraq. Daniel Nottingham has the story from Capitol Hill. Sure. Senator John McCain grilled Chuck Hagel, President Obama's defense secretary nominee, about his opposition to the troop surge in Iraq. And your refusal to answer whether you were right or wrong about it is going to have an impact on my judgment as to whether to vote for your confirmation or not. Some Republicans are already on the record that they won't support Hagel. He tried to address their concerns. I'm on the record many times uh, in speeches and on the floor of the Senate in the book I wrote in 2008 a saying that Iran is a state sponsor uh, of terrorism. Hagel served as a senator from Nebraska for 12 years. During that time, he made controversial remarks about Israel that are still under scrutiny. So give me an example of where we've been intimidated by the Israeli Jewish lobby to do something dumb regarding the Mideast, Israel, or anywhere else? Well, I can't give you an example. Thank you. Do you agree with me you shouldn't have said something like that? Yes, I do. If I confirmed, would. Hagel would become the first enlisted man and first Vietnam veteran to lead the Pentagon. I saw it from the bottom. I, see what, I saw what happens. I saw the consequences and the suffering and the horror of war. Former chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Sam Nunn, strongly supports Hagel's nomination. He comes from the Republican side, but he's got a lot of admirers on the Democratic side of the aisle. I think he knows defense. He was a war hero. If confirmed, Hagel will be the only Republican in President Obama's cabinet. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Super Bowl fans are flocking to New Orleans for the big game. While in town, many are taking advantage of the Big Easy's world-class food. Vanita Nair has the story. Café du Monde in the French Quarter, it's roll, drop, and powder as usual. On a typical day, they are busy. This weekend, they expect to get slammed. We've increased our fryer capacity. We're bringing in more, more waiters. Vice President Bert Benrood says they have doubled the number of servers for their takeaway business and have ordered extra of just about everything. His Super Bowl weekend goal is for guests to be in and out in under 15 minutes and covered in powdered sugar. This is our 10th Super Bowl, so it's not our first rodeo. Across New Orleans, the Super Bowl is proving to be a culinary boon. There are 52 new restaurants since the last time this city hosted, and some are charging cancellation fees if you reserve and don't show up. Extra bartenders, waiters, and kitchen workers are being brought in on chartered buses. Shipping is also proving to be a healthy business at the Central Grocery Company where they are sending muffalettas overnight. Owner Frank Tusa says he uses the best Italian cold cuts and a homemade olive salad. The store is normally closed on Sundays, but for the Super Bowl, they are making an exception. It's fun and crazy, as long as we can handle the crowds, that's the thing. While some locals say they are leaving town to avoid the huge crowds, restaurant owners are thrilled. They hope hungry tourists bring plenty of cash. Vanita Nair, CBS News, New Orleans. And that wraps things up from the Global News Desk. To see more stories from across the country and around the world, such as the family members' reactions about the deadly Brazil nightclub fire, you can tune in to Trojan Vision Global News right after the nightly news. Now back to you, Diatra. Thanks, Amanda. And now Danielle Percival joins us with sports. So, Danielle, it seems like our women's basketball team came up short last night. That's right, Deatra. It was a close game early in the second half, but kind of got out of their reach. But we'll give you a game recap coming up and also a preview of the men's game, which will be tonight. So, let's get into it. All right. The women's basketball team was looking to break a losing streak last night, but the hill was too high to climb against the Hilltoppers. Despite leading early in the second half, the Trojans were unable to keep momentum on their side, losing to Western Kentucky 98-80 last night. 
Troy had five players score in double figures in one of the highest scoring games since their last victory. Jasmine Pitts led Troy with a career high 19 points and eight assists. Joanna Harden, who averaged 23 points over the last five games, only knocked down 15 this time around. Wednesday night's victory by the Hilltoppers meant a sweep of the Trojans for Western this season and dropped the Trojans to 0-11 in conference play. Troy will be back in action on the home court this weekend, taking on Louisiana Lafayette. There will be a doubleheader in Trojan Arena with the women's game beginning at 5:15, and then the men's game to follow. But for the men's team, they aren't focused on the Ragin' Cajuns yet. They've still got the Hilltoppers in their sights. Troy will be taking on Western Kentucky tonight at 7 in Bowling Green. In the first matchup between these teams earlier this season, Troy lost a close one, 75-71 at home. It wasn't Emil Jones who led the Trojans in this one, but Antoine Myers, who had a career night scoring 20 points. Now, Jones was still productive on the court with 14 points and four rebounds. Head coach Don Maestri said the game plan this time around will be similar to their first outing against the Hilltoppers. A lot different, you know, that uh, we have to do this time around. I, I just think that uh, last time we really played pretty darn good until the last two or three minutes and uh, actually gave the game away. So I think this time around, uh, hopefully we're in it early, and then at the end, if we have a chance, that we can finish the game. Again, game time for tonight's game is at 7 o'clock at EA Diddle Arena. While track and field isn't about a conference schedule, there are still opportunities for the team to compete against teams they'll be facing in the conference championship. The women's indoor team participated in the Arkansas State Invitational last Friday and will be traveling tomorrow to take part in the MTSU Invitational in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Director of Track and Field Jill Lancaster knows the importance of seeing those conference schools in competition before the indoor championship. The other conference schools where we can start to measure up. It's really a check. You put a little bit of your Trojan pride on the line when you're going against Western Kentucky, Georgia State, Middle Tennessee, and us. And then there will be a few other smaller schools there. But it's a good way uh, to have a good quality competition. It kind of gives you a hint of what's to come, and it, sometimes it's an eye-opener for some. The MTSU Invitational will be on Saturday in Murfreesboro. With opening day just a little over two weeks away, the Trojan baseball team is loosening up, practicing their swing, and maybe most importantly, working to build team chemistry, something that head coach Bobby Pierce says was an issue for the team in 2012. We normally have very good chemistry last year. For whatever reason, that kind of got away from us. Um, that's a thing that as a coach, you kind of hope it manifests itself. It kind of comes together. You can't always control it. Um, but a couple of things came up that kind of got us out of focus and what we normally do. What better way to spend a Sunday afternoon than out at the ballpark? While there won't be any grounders or pop flies, fans do have the opportunity to come out and meet the players and coaches for both softball and baseball at Fan Day. All the action begins at 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon at Real Pace Field. Amanda Diatra, women's team didn't have any luck last night, but hopefully the men's team can come and they're on a two-game winning streak right now. Hopefully they can pick up a third tonight. And then there's also doubleheader on Saturday. So while fans can't go out and support the team tonight, well, maybe they get the opportunity on Saturday. Exactly. Any chance to be able to support our Trojans. That's right. It's great to have all the fans out there to support them and cheer them on. Exactly. Thanks so much, Danielle. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Danielle. Coming up on Trojan Vision Nightly News and Trojan Talk, Aaron Taylor learns about a program that helps Americans embrace a different culture. But first, today's weather conditions were very different than yesterday's. But what can we expect for the rest of the week? And for some clear skies as we go into the weekend, into the weekend, I have better more coming up next in weather. Come on, let's go. Hey. Hey, hi, what's your name? You live around here? You're pretty. W where are you guys going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? It's about time to get you fixed, sweetie. Your pets will start getting noticed sooner right, than go. you think. Accidental litters lead to millions killed in shelters each year. Help prevent more. Fix at month four. Doctor nurse. I want to work in the NFL. Troy University's College of Health and Human Services prepares students for high-demand careers of today and tomorrow. Careers offering attractive pay and the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others. My courses aren't just classwork. I've worked with the Department of Human Resources to put my skills to work with helping people. I couldn't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. From the high 
high-definition digital production studios of Troy University. You're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. And now Jamarlo Phillips joins us with weather. So, Jamarlo, we saw some pretty clear skies today, definitely lower temperatures. Is that Are those same conditions looking to stick around the rest of the week? Well, Amanda, those clear skies are going to be in our um, forecast for the rest of the week. And also some very cool temperatures as well, Spe respecting those uh, low 60s, but I'll get into more of that right now. But first, let's take a look at our campus snapshot. Taking a look across Bib Graves Quad, we can see that the sun has set. Um, it's been, a, like, a, like Amanda said, a very clear day today in Troy. Going into our current conditions, our skies are sunny right now. Tem temperature coming in at 53 degrees, dew point 24 degrees, um, humidity at 32 percent, Brahma reading 30.19 inches and rising, with our winds coming from the west northwest at about three miles per hour. Going into our stats for today, we're able to see a high of 54 today, a low of 36. There was no rain in our area. Sun rose this morning at 6:37 a.m. and it's supposed to set was well, already set at 5.17 p.m. Taking a look at our temperatures from around the state, we can see that Mobile sitting down here at 59 degrees, um, being the highest across Alabama right now. But taking a look in North Alabama as well as down in East Alabama, they're experiencing those low 50 degree temperatures as well as um, those high 40s. 48 in Huntsville, Birmingham sitting at 50, 50 degrees, Montgomery 54 as well as Troy and Phoenix City at 53 degrees. Going into our current temperatures across the southeast, we can see that we're still experiencing those low 50 degree temperatures. But as we move south or down into the Florida area, Miami, Tampa and Orlando, they're experiencing those uh, low 60 to mid 60 degree temperatures in those areas. Taking a look at our current temperatures across the United States, we can see towards the west, they're experiencing very cool temperatures in those areas, 40s. But as we move west, but as we move eastward, we can see that they are experiencing in the uh, purplish area, they're experiencing very low temperatures as well, all the way in the negatives. Taking a look at our departure from normal. Um, again, in our area, we can see that we haven't um, changed. Um, we haven't changed much, but as we see uh, portions of North Alabama, they've been experiencing about a six degree decrease than what they've been seeing. Going into our current surface map, we can see that um, not too much going on in the southeast. Taking a closer look, we can see that um, just a few gust winds, um, cold front sitting out here in the middle portion of, uh, of Florida. Going into our precipitation forecast for the next 48 hours, our area should be clear of rain. But as we look towards the North Alabama and North Georgia area, they will be experiencing about a quarter of an inch of rain. So if you are planning on traveling in those areas, make sure that you um, keep an umbrella with you. Going into our Friday's forecast for tomorrow, our area will be clear of rain as we go into the weekend. Again, we will be clear of rain in our area, but as far as North Alabama and um, portions of Georgia, we'll be seeing um, about a quarter of an inch of rain, like I said before. Going into Sunday, no rain in our area, um, but as we go into Monday, some rain will be coming to our area maybe by Tuesday, early Tuesday morning or maybe even Tuesday afternoon. So going into our tonight's forecast. Tonight we'll be seeing mostly clear skies, winds coming from the west from a, at about 5 to 10 miles per hour with a low of 37 degrees. Going into tomorrow's forecast, tomorrow we'll be seeing partly cloudy skies, those winds coming from the north northwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour with a high of 53 degrees. Taking a look at our four-day forecast. As we go into Friday, Friday will be mostly sunny with the, low, with the high of 53 degrees with the low of 27. Saturday, sunny skies, a high of 60 degrees. Sunday, partly cloudy skies, a high of 63. And Monday, uh, sunny skies and a high of 63 degrees with that 20% chance of rain. So, Amanda, Deatra, for the rest of the week and going into the weekend, um, we should be experiencing some very clear skies, very um, nice, cool weather. All right, we're looking forward to those good conditions for the weekend. Right. Thank you, Jamarla. Thank Thanks, Jamarla.